Hi everybody and welcome to the channel. I am Richard. Today I am gonna show you Zombicide Second Edition. I am quite thrilled because this is my go-to game if I just want to have a really really good and funny evening. By myself or with friends, it really doesn't matter. This is a 1 to 6 player game. It's about 1 hour of gameplay depending on which mission you play from 14 years and above. There's a lot of dark humor in this game. There's a lot of funny missions in this game. It's really, really easy to learn. Really takes no time at all to sit down and just go through these rules and get it up on the table and start playing. And the setup is quite, quite easy as well. And now that they have changed a few rules here with the spawning, I'm going to show you this, and the setup, it will go really, really fast to get it up on the table and start playing. And it is a lot of fun. I mean, there's no deep, dark story here. It's just you going out with your friends and tearing up the town's zombies, trying to make it through the night. And I really, really like it. It's a funny and enjoyable game. So in this video, I'm going to show you the setup of this game. I'm going to give you an overview of the game and go through some of the rules. So let's just have a look at it. This is the setup of the game. Now, each setup, depending on which mission you are playing, will look a bit different. In the back of the rulebook, you will have different missions. And each mission here is laid out different. You will have different starting zones, different exit zones, objectives, pimp crates, spawn zones, and so on. The tiles themselves will also be placed out different depending on which mission you are playing. But this is the setup of mission number one. We have placed out the big tiles according to the mission. We have placed the survivors here in the central map. We have placed pimp crates on each pimp crate symbol on the map. We have placed doors where there are door openings on each building. These should be placed with the closed door up and not the open one. We have also placed out objectives looking like this on each objective mark on the map. Here we have the spawn zones. And we have another one down here that you can see at the moment. And the players have also received player boards, all corresponding to their miniature. The players then need to take the little pins here and put them up according to this. Starting with one pin on the first skill and one pin on the top of the HP track and three extra out here. This down here, this is the adrenaline point track and it should be set on zero at the start. Next to the table we have put out some different decks. We have the red decks up here, these are the pimp crate weapons and you get them when you search the pimp crates. The blue ones here are the more common weapons, these are the ones that you get if you just search a room. And then of course we have zombie spawn cards here. These are the ones that we draw to see which zombies we will spawn. And every now and then we will spawn an abomination and then we need to randomly choose one from here to see which abomination we will get. The last thing we need to do before getting into war with zombies is to hand out some starting equipment. These are these grey cards right here. These should just be handed out randomly to each player. And once we have done that, we are ready to kill some zombies. At the start of the game, each player can perform three actions with their mini. One of those actions could be, for example, to search the pimp crate and get a pimp crate weapon. The red ones, remember? These weapons here are a little bit better than the ordinary weapons. And you can take these weapons directly and put them in your hand of your character. The weapons that you pick up can be placed in your hand and be used immediately. But of course you need to have a hand free. If you already hold two weapons, when you won't be able to hold the third one, right? Because you only have two hands. In that case, you would have been able to place it in your backpack instead. But when you have a weapon in your backpack, of course you can't use it right away because, well, it's in your backpack. To use a weapon, you will have to have it in your hands. And these two here are your hand slots. 
So we searched the pimp crate and now there's nothing more to search in the room, right? No, that is wrong because you can still search the room itself. But instead of getting the cool red pimp weapons, you will now get the ordinary blue ones. But there's a lot of good weapons here as well. There are a lot of different equipment in this game for you to use. A lot of different cool weapons, bag of rice for some more action points, solve down shotguns, some bullets there to do some rerolls, some katanas, a flashlight to search more, but every now and then you will also draw one of these. Because it's not all good things you're gonna find. This one will spawn a zombie in the zone that you are. But other than that, there's a lot of cool, cool things for you to find. In this mission, you also had the objectives. These red ones here. And these can also be picked up as an action. Another thing you can do is of course to move your little figures around. And you can move one step per action. So you start with three actions and you would be able to move three steps. Each room in the building represents one step. Each little square here out on the streets also represent one step. So if I for example take this little miniature Odin here and put him out on the street, that would be one step. If I move him to another square here, that would be another step. Making him take one, two actions. Your characters can also open doors during their turn. To do this, they need a weapon with the door opening symbol on them. And you simply just play this card. There's no need to roll a die or anything. And you just flip the little door token over to symbolize that the door is now open and they cannot be closed again. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. Every time you open a door to a building, you need to spawn some zombies. Drawing a card from the zombie spawn deck to see what you will get. Depending on where you are in the adrenaline point track meter here, you can see there's different color fields. We're still down here in the blue field, so we only spawn one zombie in this room, for example. Placing one walker in a dark room. But we need to draw for every dark room, so we need to do the same thing again to see what we get here. As you can see here, this is an extra activation. So this is actually not a spawn. If we would have been in the yellow field, all runners would have an extra activation. But we're still down in the blue, so nothing happens. If we instead would have drawn a walker rush here, for example, you can see that we will have to spawn three walkers in this room and then activate them. Placing three walkers in the room and then simply moving them one step right away. There's an extra activations for the fatties, runners and the walkers, but there's only a rush for the fatties and walkers. So now that we have spawned some zombies out on the map, we can also start to fight. But to be able to fight, you of course need to see what you're fighting, because you can only shoot or fight with what you can see. You need to be in line of sight, of course. And line of sight works pretty easy. When you're out on the streets, you can see the full amount of length as the street. But you can only see straight lines, so you can't shoot diagonal. And if you're standing out on the street and looking into a house, you can only see the first room and you can't see the rooms that comes after that. Makes sense, right? Because it's a house and the walls are in the way and just makes sense. So to be able to shoot, for example, from here to here, you need to check out what weapons you have. So if we take a look at the cool weapon Ostara here is wielding, she can shoot one to four spaces away. She gets to roll two dice. Three and above is counted as a hit. And this one does two damage. Every time you use a weapon that has this little noise symbol down here, you need to put out a noise token in the area where the noise was made. This will draw the attention of the zombies. 
And it's not always a bad thing. I mean, you could make some noise to my, try to lead the zombies away from a different location from where you want them to be. But you should use it kind of carefully because the zombies are multiplying fast. Every now and then you will also find cars out on the streets. And you can use an action to get into the car. You can search the car for weapons or whatever you can find. And you can choose to drive the car. You can choose to drive it slow, meaning that you only drive it one step. Or you can choose to drive it fast, meaning that you will drive it two steps. Also killing all the zombies in the zone that you drive through. Just be careful because you will also hit your own while doing this. During your adventure you will meet different type of zombies and they will have different type of health points. The walkers down here they will have a health point of one and basically any weapon can take care of them. The same thing goes for the runners here. They also have a health point for one. But the big guys up here, the fat, uh, the brutes or fatties or whatever they're called, they have a health point of two. So here you need a weapon that has a damage with two on them to be able to take care of this bad guy. But the abominations, they are a story for themselves. They have a health point of three, which means that you need to have a weapon that does three damage to take care of them. And basically, the only way to kill one of these big ones is to use a Motlo Cocktail. This one will not only kill the big abomination here, but it will kill everything that is in the same square as the abomination. So if you throw this one in here, you would kill all of these zombies, getting adrenaline point for each and one of them. The normal zombies here gives you one adrenaline point, but the big guy over here gives you five adrenaline points. So the abominations are pretty bad news, right? But the good thing is there can only be one out on the board at a time. So you never have to fight three or four of these at the same time. I guess that counts for something, right? As you gain adrenaline points, you will eventually gain a new level. Each color down here that you can see represents a level. So when you come up to the yellow field up here, you will also get a new ability. Taking the pin here and putting it in the yellow field. The blue one, that was the one you get from the start, because you start in the blue field, remember? The yellow one you get when you come up to the yellow field. And when you come up to the orange field over here, you get to choose one of the two. When you get all the way up to the red field, you can choose one of the three. Once the players are done, we move into the zombie phase. And the first thing we need to do in the zombie phase is to activate the zombies. The walkers, abominations and the fatties, they have one action each. But the runners, they have two. If we would be standing in this area with one of our players, they would attack the player first before doing anything else. But as there's no one in there, they would start to move instead. Moving the runner one step in here, and then attack one of the players. And we can choose which player we would like to suffer this damage. Once we have done that, we move in the rest of the zombies. That was the movements of the zombies. It's really, really easy. The fatties, the abominations and the walkers have one action each. If they start at an empty space, they move one step to whatever they can see or whatever they can hear. If they start their activation in the same square as a survivor, they will do damage on those survivors. One damage each. So it can pretty quick become a lot of damage. We have four zombies here, that would make these two in a lot of trouble because that would be four damage. But like I said, you can split out the damage any way you want. If these two should die, well these three actions are over, but the runner still will have one left, right? So he would move on to whoever he can see, or again here. And if you start your activation your next turn, in the same spot as a zombie, you need two 
actions to move away from them. If you are not like Ostara here, a child. Because if you are a child, you have something that's called a slippery action. Meaning that you can actually just slip away from this zombie and, well, hopefully forget about him. So once we have done the zombie activation, we move into the spawning again. We need to spawn some more zombies, this time out on the map, on the spawn points, starting at number 1. Again, we draw a card here to see what we get. This time we're up at the yellow level here, so we should spawn three runners on this location. And then we move on to the next spawn point. Again, draw a card to see what we get. Spawn some zombies there, and then we do it for the last spawn point as well. So once we're done activating the zombies, and we have spawned all the new zombies in the spawn locations, we move into the end phase. And this is really just a matter of removing noise tokens on the table, taking the first player token and moving it to the player to the left, and then we restart again. And it's, this is how the game keeps on going, and it's really that simple. In the player phase, players take their actions. In the zombie phase, you activate zombies and then you spawn new zombies. And then you go into the end phase again. And this is the way the game goes on until you meet the objectives of the mission or you all die. The rulebook is really, really easy to read and really, really easy to learn. It pretty much just makes sense when you go through it. There's really not that many questions on how you do something or why or so on. It really just makes sense all the way. And the missions, there's tons of different missions. In this book, there's a bunch of missions for you to take on. We go all the way up here to mission 25. But in on Simon's website is a bunch of even more missions. There you have it people, that was Zombicide 2nd Edition for you. A fast and funny game. You can really sit down with somebody that have never played Zombicide and have them playing within minutes. It's just that easy. I have played this with my kids and they perfectly understand it. So the rules are not hard at all. It all just sets on the card and it basically just makes sense when you're playing it. And there's no deeper meaning with this game there's no deep history or something like that it's really about you going to town with your friends and slaying some zombies of course you have different missions things that you have to do things that you have to complete to make it out alive but the base theory of this game is really to just have a good time and slay some zombies go out there get some cool gears search some buildings drive over some zombies do whatever you feel like this is a lot, a lot of fun, and I highly recommend it. If you like funny, fast, miniature games where you don't sit down for hours to think out a strategic game, this is for you. There are links down here in the description, so check that out if you want to know more about the game. If you like this video, people, please give me a thumbs up. It really makes me so happy every time. If you like my channel, well, why not subscribe to it? It gives me a smile on my lips every time. And until next time, people, please keep on spreading that board gaming love that I know you all have. Peace.